So hello everyone, welcome back. This is the review from last lecture. Uh, in fact, I will make it a little bit more detailed because I made some uh, changes. Um, in the meantime, um, I mean, the essence is still the same, but um, maybe I made it a little bit easier to understand. Um, so I will go through the whole slide set. Um, yeah, and also it's the uh, first time since a long time that I'm doing reinforcement learning. So um, it's definitely on the construction because a lot of things have changed uh, since uh, last time I did this lecture. So um, some people distinguish between supervised learning and unsupervised learning. Um, I mean, this distinction sometimes makes sense. Sometimes it doesn't make too much sense, but um, this is the way uh, people discuss it, and it's 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 a useful view in, in some sense. Um, so in uh, supervised learning, uh, we, uh, I mean that was sort of covered in most of the lecture. Uh, we have an input x of some dimensionality and one or several outputs y. Uh, and in the training data, both are known, and in the test data, only x is known, and one tries to predict y. And since uh, in the training y is uh, given, um, the implication is that there's a supervisor who gives you the correct answers in training uh, the agent, and then later on the agent has to survive without the supervisor. Uh, in uh, unsupervised learning, only x is known in training and in testing. Uh, maybe a better uh, definition uh, is to say that one does not distinguish between input and output, as in Bayesian networks. Um, goals are maybe um, you won't be uh, you might be interested in understanding or learning about the structure in the data, as in clustering. Or another case uh, is that uh, in, in the test data, different variables can be inputs or outputs. Uh, also, for example, in our discussion on uh, Bayesian. Uh, Bayesian networks. Uh, but in, in some sense, the learner is not really smart in the sense that the agent uh, can only learn to describe what is in the data. Um, and sometimes, sometimes that's not enough. So in a clinical setting, we might want to learn to uh, imitate the doctor. Okay, that, that would be supervised learning. But can we become smarter than the doctor? And reinforcement learning is a learning-based optimization approach which tries to achieve that. So in reinforcement learning, an agent acts in an environment and receives rewards, rewards and punishment as feedback uh, and uh, as a result of its actions. So there's no teacher, but the environment uh, gives you information if you did well or mm, did not do well. The agent should learn based on the interactions with the environment and from rewards or punishments to optimize its behavior. Rewards can also be delayed, for example, at the end of the board game, you win or lose, and so your reward or punishment is after many moves, and you have to learn to optimize your game based on this um, a little informative information at the end of the game. And an action may have a long-term consequence, so you're the first move in your chess game might determine if you uh, win or lose at the end. Um, so yeah, if you're a parent, um, then uh, you, you, you might reward your child for doing something well, uh, maybe uh, give a sweet, and the child learns to repeat uh, what, what was well done. And it was probably something the child recently did. So, uh, and the child might want to optimize its behavior or its action to get more reward. But it's also the other way around. Uh, small children uh, reward and punish their parents with a smile or by uncontrolled screaming. And uh, patients uh, learn to optimize their behavior so that the rewards are maximized and punishments are minimized. Um, and it's obvious that the children only give very unspecific signals and the parents uh, train themselves to find out uh, which action, action is to blame um, and uh, then uh, try to avoid a loud screaming by the baby in the future. Uh, technically, um, we are considering Markov uh, decision processes 
um, and we're solving so-called multi-stage optimization problems. Uh, and there are three parts. Uh, in the first part of the lecture, which I'm talking about now, it's about the derivation, derivation of optimal actions with uh, perfect knowledge about the system one is trying to optimize. Uh, the keywords are model-based planning, uh, model-based approaches, planning, and, and uh, dynamic programming. So that's a an approach which which is quite old. Um, so maybe it was developed uh, in the fifties and sixties, um, and partially also later, of course. And the second part is about the duration of optimal actions. Uh, which you can derive by observing the system or a simulation of the system um, um, or by experimenting with the system or a simulation. Um, so so you, you don't assume anymore that you have a perfect knowledge about the system or the world or the environment, and you also don't have uh, perfect knowledge about how reward is distributed. Um, and, um, uh, and that also increases uh, efficiency in some sense, uh, because the way you optimize in the first part can be quite expensive computationally. And um, in the third part, uh, we discuss uh, about the role of function approximators, for example, neural networks, and a number of advanced topics. And uh, neural networks are essential to solve one of the really big challenging problems like uh, AlphaGo, so the game of Go, or the game of um, backgammon. So there's uh, excellent literature available uh, and uh, a book which you can download uh, for free. Um, this is a second edition now, an introduction to reinforcement learning by Sutton and Barto. Uh, so I re refer to it sometimes as SB. Um, these were really the pioneers in the field and, and they write very nice, nice books. And uh, if you want to have a shorter uh, way to the goal, uh, there's an excellent slide set and video uh, available, video lecture from uh, David Silver. And um, so a lot of the, this lecture is based on his slides and I'm trying to use this notation, not always, but, but mostly. But if you, I also will tell, give you information about which um, sections uh, we are covering and we are talking about. So I uh, highly recommend it that you maybe look at his video um, if you're interested in this uh, field and then maybe buy the book uh, at some point as well. Or, download the slides, uh, download the book, I mean, sorry. Um, yeah, so um, a very short technical introduction and uh, which um, also always uh, is a little bit surprising to me, but uh, expected values are um, additive. Uh, so if you have two values, X and Y and a joint distribution, so they're not assumed to be independent. And uh, the expectation of X is the sum over the values of X times the probability of these values. And same thing for y, uh, and you have a quantity which is the sum of x and y, then the uh, expected value of the sum uh, is the sum of the expected values of, the, of x and y. Um, and this is uh, very important for the lecture. Um, and uh, yeah, it's always also a little bit surprising to me that the correlation and the dependencies uh, are not important when it's about uh, expected values of sums. So we are starting uh, with a one-stage problem. Uh, so uh, eventually multi uh, reinforcement learning will be about uh, multi multi-stage problems, but uh, a lot can be understood by just looking at, at one step. So let's look at the, the left side here, the, the figure on the left side. Uh, this is a situation which is important for calculating Q functions or defining Q functions. So the world is in a state S, and there are many possible states, um, and uh, it transitions to um, state S prime in the next instance. And uh, this transition depends on which action is chosen. 
Uh, so, uh, for example, uh, you, you, you're making your move in a, in a board game uh, or you're controlling something, then maybe it's a force you're applying. Um, and so, uh, so there's an action and the next state will depend on the previous state and the action. Um, and then in addition, there's a reward. So uh, if, you, if you're doing uh, action A, uh, so this is all probabilistic. So there's a probability of S prime given S and A. And there's also a probability of getting a particular reward R prime. So I prime happens uh, sort of at the time of S prime. Um, and there's a conditional probability here. So uh, the reward you're getting will depend on the next state, on the action you did, and on the previous state. Uh, but this is the most general case. Sometimes some of these errors might also be, be missing. Uh, but in the most general case, it depends on uh, these three things. And uh, uh, we're also considering that there is a, a policy. Where a policy is a control law, uh, which can be deterministic, but it can also be probabilistic. Uh, and a policy or control law is simply uh, a dependency of the action depending on state s uh, and this is called a policy and it's described by this conditional probability so if you are simulating the system on the right side you're in some state s then the policy determines which action to take based on the state and the action you will, will be in another state in the next instance as prime and you would get a reward uh, possibly for the situation uh, so this is what I'm describing here. Um, S is the state, A is the action, S prime is the next state, um, R prime is the reward you're getting uh, after moving to the state S prime, but it can be dependent on A and S as well. Uh, so here the, on the left side, now we only have uh, uh, two probabilities uh, because we're not considering P of S, we're considering P of S prime given S and then the probability of reward given S prime A and S. So that's written here. So we can apply our knowledge we learned about Bayesian network quite nicely by reading off the conditional probability T's and also the, the joint model. Um, and here we are conditioning on S and A because that's what we have influence about. A we have influence about and S is what maybe we started off with. And uh, so this has three things. So it's a three-way array. If you want to look at all the numbers, uh, number of states times number of states times number of actions. So this is the probability of ending up in state S prime given you're in state S and you apply action A. Uh, and this is uh, the probability of getting a reward R prime given you in state S prime. Um, from S and after applying action A. So as I said, this is the most general case and sometimes um, you're conditioning on fewer things here on the right side. But since there are four things involved, uh, the whole table would be, or array would be an S, a four to four way array of size S prime, uh, uh, size of S times size of S times number of elements in S times number of elements in A. No. Number of states and number of elements. Uh, Um, yeah, on the right side, it's almost the, the same thing. Uh, the only thing is we have a third conditional probability of action given S. So we added this term here, which was not present here yet. And this conditional probability is called the policy pi. So it can change. Uh, we try to find the optimal policy. And since there are two things, A and S, uh, it can be represented by uh, an array of size, uh, size of A times size of S, and uh, conditional uh, probabilities always need to be normalized, and uh, all entries need to be non-zero, non-negative. Sorry, non-negative. Um, uh, in some cases, we have a, a deterministic policy, so then the action is a function of S, um, and an optimal policy is indicated by an asterisk, asterisk um, by star or pi asterisk um, and uh, it turns out in fully observed markov decision problems so if you observe all actions and all states 
the optimal policies uh, are deterministic. But in other cases, if you cannot observe the whole system, um, uh, the optimal policy might be non-deterministic. Um, so an, an example is if, uh, if there are two uh, roads from A to B, uh, and the policeman always sends people randomly to the right and left, then it's a random policy, uh, which is quite um, efficient, uh, much better than sending all the people on one road and not the other. Uh, but the policy depend uh, is so simple because the, the policeman doesn't know how the road is occupied. Uh, if he ha would have that information, um, he might still do something quite similar, having this information. But even without having the state information, how many cars are on which road already, this random policy can be quite quite efficient. Um, also, uh, in reinforcement learning, there's sometimes this exploration phase um, where you want to see, uh, sort of explore the space of possible actions and consequences. And in that uh, time, in this exploratory stage, you also want to apply uh, random policies. Um, the next thing, important thing is the reward function. And it's the expected reward, so our prime you're getting when you're in state S and uh, you're applying action A, and it's the immediate reward. It's the one uh, which happens at uh, S prime as, uh, in the next time step, and which can be depend on S and A and S uh, oh, prime. So uh, to get this expectation, we have to sum over all next states S prime, and also, of course, for the expectation over all R, so that should be an R prime, no, not an R, just a note here. Um, yeah, so it's this double sum, this one for the expectation, and this one because we have to integrate grade out S prime. Uh, and this is now a, a continuous number, no? so um, it's it's not binary, or it's not the reward itself, it's the expected reward. Uh, so depending on what rewards you get, it's, uh, it can be a continuous number, or if you only get positive rewards, it would be non-negative, but in general it can be any real number. And it's important, no? the reward happens at S prime, but it's associated the expected reward uh, is associated with with S. And I think and one one reason to get confused is to forget that this is the expected value, and the other one was the actual R is the actual R prime is the actual reward. <clears throat> so this is a two-dimensional array of real numbers um, with uh, two dimensions S and, and A. Uh, and the action value function, and also called Q function, and I will call, call it more Q function because there's so many value functions around, easy to get confused. So this is uh, a Q function, uh, and it's uh, <coughs> sorry, the expected uh, reward you're getting uh, when you're in state S applying action A, <coughs> and then you have to integrate grade out again S prime and R prime, to get the expected value. And uh, of course, in this case, uh, it is exactly the same as this reward function in this uh, one stage uh, problem. But uh, it will be more complicated later on. But it's important to understand what the Q function is. It's the reward you're getting when you're in state A and you're applying action A. So it's the expected reward. Um, when you're doing that. Um, we can also um, um, uh, integrate out the action and uh, we are defining, so this is more case two again, the, the right side. Um, so uh, we, now we are also applying a policy, so we are here now in this model. Um, uh, so we also average over the probability of the action 
uh, at the state and we integrate over the actions a and um, and then in this reward function um, a is missing because we are just following the policy um, so there are two of these reward functions one when we apply policy pi and one when we're just exploring action a uh, and now we can uh, define the state value function or also simply called value function so then we have value function and q function um, and it's the expected reward uh, under the policy pi and um, it's uh, also in this um, case it turns out to be uh, the same thing as this reward function we just defined but again in general it's more complicated so in the, in the situation on the right side we are always having a policy in place which determines deterministically or probabilistically which action we are taking when we are in state uh, when we are in state s state s sorry and of course uh, we can calculate the value function from the q function by multiplying the q function with the policy and integrating over all, all actions. Uh, we are now interested to perform the action that gives us the maximum uh, expected reward. And uh, it's simply the q function where we do the max over the action. So we are checking simply which action will give us the optimal reward and that's then uh, yeah, r star from s um, and and the policy um, is uh, deterministic so these are the same things uh, so i should probably make this more clear um, so you can also consider this the policy of s um, so if you're on state S, you should apply exactly this uh, optimal policy. Uh, and you can also look at the value of the optimal policy, which is the maximum, I mean, the maximum Q function where you max over the action A, uh, which would give you the value function of the optimal policy, which is this one, which is the action, which is optimal under the Q function, and so on. So here in this one stage example, uh, it is quite easy to... Um, decide on which action is the optimal action and as we expect it will become more complex if we have more than one um, stage but even this very simple uh, example uh, has been studied a lot um, and uh, there are two fields which are concerned with this situation uh, one, one is called contextual multi-armed bandit problems uh, and the other one are called learning automata. Um, so in both cases, the probabilities are not known, but samples are generated. So it becomes more like reinforcement learning later, uh, but it's a one stage uh, uh, problem. And contextual, uh, because S is observed, and why the name uh, multi-armed multi -armed bandit problem comes from the Las Vegas style slot machines which are sometimes called one-armed bandits. And, and if you have a, a machine uh, with maybe several options to pull an arm and with different probabilities of winning if you're pulling the different arms, um, then it becomes very close to this problem we have just discussed. So now we are getting a little bit more complex. We are considering uh, two stages. <coughs> So on the left side, uh, we added uh, another action, another state, and another reward. Uh, so this uh, lower part is the same as before. Uh, but in this situation, we are we believe uh, our choice for S and A open, uh, but we assume that in the second stage, uh, the policy is followed. Uh, so this is, we're conditioning on S and A, but we are insisting that a prime uh, is generated from S prime according to, to the policy. And this uh, will be then important for the definition of the Q function. Uh, on the right side, it's more the situation which is important for the value function. Uh, and in this case, also the first action A is uh, chosen based on the 
policy which is in place. Otherwise, they're both identical. So on the left side, uh, everything becomes uh, a little bit more complicated because we have more random variables uh, and we get more terms here on the right side. Um, so this is the old term and then these are the new terms. Um, but we can just simply read them off of uh, this figure in the same way we did it for Bayesian networks. Um, and in the, on the right side, we are having uh, both uh, probabilities for the uh, policy for A given S and A prime given S, whereas before for the uh, Q value setting, uh, we only had um, uh, uh, we did not we did not have the term uh, pi of a given s because we are thinking we are conditioning on these uh, two, two guys. And then we can uh, look at different uh, reward functions. So we can first look at uh, the, the upper part. Um, and we can calculate the Q function, which then we take out the policy step. Um, uh, so what is the reward of um, or the expected value of R double prime given S prime given A prime. So here we can um, um, implement our formula from before and just call it the reward function at S prime A prime. Uh, then we can consider how much the reward uh, R double prime, um, uh, what is the expected value of that val uh, of that quantity given initial state S and initial action A. Uh, so now we are thinking, so we are doing the action now uh, and we are evaluating the consequence later on. Um, then we just have to integrate over more quantities. And um, so we get a uh, sum over S prime over the probability of S prime given S A, uh, the sum over the action A prime uh, given uh, under the policy um, times the uh, Q tilde. Q tilde is the stuff on, on the right side. Um, and, and here we are already seeing that this uh, Q function is sort of propagating uh, closer by. And you can uh, do the same thing for, oh no, this is for the action value function. Oh yeah, now we're interested in the sum of both. No? We want to see what is the consequent of, of this action on the immediate reward, R prime, but also on the more distant reward, R double prime. And um, as we discussed before, we can just add the two expected values and we get um, the uh, immediate reward, our expect, uh, the reward function from S and A, plus this more distant reward propagated by uh, the probability of uh, action A prime given S prime and uh, S prime given S and A and integrating out these terms. So this is just the, this term plus the immediate reward we're getting uh, at uh, when we're doing uh, action A in state S. And this is also sort of, we have this Q function which propagates to the earlier Q function and we add the instant reward to it. And we can also um, do one more integration and then get the value function out for the policy uh, which is here we, uh, we have to integrate uh, over the probability of the action given S, which gives us the reward function for S under the policy, uh, plus this uh, third term, uh, which propagates the, pi, uh, the value of the S prime uh, to the value at S. And we have, here we have used in this definition that the probability of S prime given S is a integration under the policy pi and integration over all A uh, the po uh, policy of A given S times the probability of S prime given S and A. Yeah, maybe this formulas become a little bit complicated, but it can all be derived from the equations. 
and, and I want to be very explicit here um, uh, so you have a good basis uh, for understanding uh, the later discussion. Yeah, and again, we have a, a nice relation between the wheel function and the Q function. So the value function is just the Q function um, and then uh, multiplied by the transition probability by the control or policy function A given S and integrated over all actions. And we also can go the other way around if we have the uh, value function at the following state as prime, then we have to multiply it by this transition probability, uh, integrate over S prime and add the um, reward function um, as a function of S and A. Also in this um, um, two stage case, uh, we can easily uh, think about the um, optimal uh, policy. Um, so um, it's it's simply the, the maximum action at A um, uh, from the, uh, derived from the maximization of the, the immediate reward of S and A uh, plus the uh, value function propagated one step ahead um, and we have to take the maximum to get the optimal policy. So we are here we are um, yeah so this is a very simple formula and uh, uh, and we can also calculate the, the, the value function at the second step which is the max over this uh, expression over here, which is the Q function at S prime and uh, and A prime. And um, yeah, so didn't I have this already? I should check this. So um, and the value function at S under the optimal policy is the uh, maximum value of this expression over here where we are applying the optimal uh, policy here in the right step oh yeah that's why the star is here it's my mistake yeah so here we have to supply the uh, value function we, we, we are getting by applying the optimal policy um, in the second step and here as well. Um, we can also um, calculate the Q function for the optimal policy, which is a, a value of uh, applying A in, in S and then following the optimal policy. And um, uh, and then we had we can, we, the maximum the maximization appears here on the right side. So it's a maximum over the second action of the Q function at the second action the second uh, point of uh, in, in the process uh, so um, and we are taking the the action which is uh, optimally here and then we just propagate it and add the instantaneous action because we are we haven't decided on a yet this a is uh, appearing here and here so this shows you how the q value is propagated to an earlier Instant. And the, the optimal policy is simply the uh, arc max over A of Q star S on A, which is the same as the arc max of this term here on the right side. Um, so in the reinforcement learning, we are interested in infinite horizon problems. Um, um, and uh, so we are looking for time invariant solutions. Uh, and then the value functions, so we can remove this tilde and the Q tilde uh, because they, they don't change in time because it's infinite uh, horizon. And we introduce the discount factor gamma to reduce the influence of events uh, far in the future. So gamma can be very close to one, but it should be uh, uh, between zero and one. And if, if one, we have uh, the promise we accumulate a lot of reward possibly in the Future, so this would might lead to infinite rewards, um, but of course, if you have a game which is terminated, then maybe gamma equals one is a is a good choice. And and this is uh, so, sometimes people draw it like this. Um, so um, so the environment 
uh, what we call the probability of um, S given the previous state and the action. Um, uh, so it gives us the next state, uh, but it also gives us a reward. Uh, and then the action gives and gets information about the reward and the state and has to decide about the next action. Now, I, f I find this not very intuitive or very, uh, I think the unrolling in time is more, it's a better idea. So in the uh, infinite uh, case, uh, no, we, we said that the value function doesn't change. Um, so uh, the value function and the policy P at state S is the uh, reward function uh, on the policy pi on the state S plus gamma. Uh, and now we are summing over uh, uh, the following states S prime, um, the probability under the policy S prime given S times the value function at S prime. So this should be an immediate uh, generalization of yeah of this function here. And the value function is the reward plus the propagated value function. But here in the two state, now this could be a, could have been a different uh, function. That's why we use this tilde here. But in the infinite state, uh, we know that this must be the same. So this called Bellman equation. We can write this also in vector notation. So this is so is a vector. This is a vector. Um, this is a matrix. It's a transition matrix. And this is a vector again. So we can write it in this form. And we can even um, get an explicit solution for the value function under a policy. It's uh, in uh, the identity matrix minus gamma, the transition matrix P, um, the inverse of that times uh, the reward uh, function. Uh, now, so this is the uh, value function for a given policy um, uh, uh, calculated explicitly, um, but this um, uh, this inversion is typically uh, almost never used uh, because the number of states is simply too large uh, for this uh, inversion to work. Um, but in small problems, I mean, and also for understanding what's going on, I think this is a good to, to look at this equation. So what people are doing are iterative um, ways of solving this um, equation. So of getting the value of the optimal policy. And um, as an uh, immediate uh, generalization of the two state, case, we get this uh, generalization. So k is now an iteration counter. Uh, so the value function for state s is updated uh, by the immediate uh, reward in state s, so the, the reward function, plus gamma. And then here we are summing over all next states um, with this transition matrix p pi, um, given the value at the uh, at the following states uh, s prime at iteration k and uh, and if we iterate this long enough and also uh, consider all different states uh, it has been shown that this converges to the um, also to the value function of the optimal of the policy pi not the term, the policy pi and this can be motivated by if you look at the two stage case we had almost the same formula so from this this guy over here and um, yeah in the appendix we provide some background on, on this policy evaluation where this equation is coming from but um, it, it's, it's just a little bit more detailed explanation but uh, so and it's a evaluation because it's the policy pi is given and we want to converge to the value function of the optimal policy so it's not improving the policies evaluating the policy and we can do the same thing with uh, a Q function, and then we get this function out. Uh, Q, an iteration K plus one at state S and A is the uh, immediate, I mean, the, the uh, reward function for S and A. Uh, and then here we have to integrate over S prime and A prime. And here we have the action given S, and we have the state, following state given S and A uh, times the, the Q function. and 
And also this formula can be nicely motivated from by the two-stage case, where here we had the Q tilde, now we have just the Q. So this is how uh, the Q function uh, can be updated. And uh, yeah, so the relationships are uh, quite clear. So again, we can uh, generate the value function from the Q function. I guess I should put a, Q, a pi here also because the Q function under the policy pi. Um, and um, and we can also get the Q function from the value function. Let's look at the value from value, Q from Q, Q from value, value from Q. Um, and then we get this, this formula down here. So now we are trying to improve the policy also in an iterative way. Um, uh, and uh, uh, policy iteration uh, means that we always calculate the, uh, first the policy value function here for a given policy uh, with policy evaluation. So with, with this formula, this or this one. Um, and uh, and then after this has converged, uh, we uh, define a new policy, uh, which is the optimal policy under the this policy, the one we just optimized, multiplied by this transition probability, and uh, the immediate reward is added, and we take the action which maximizes this expression um, for a given state s, and this would define our new policy. Uh, for the new policy, we then um, uh, estimate the value function again, as before, and then we go forth and back a few steps, value function, better policy, value function, better policy, until we have reached some form of convergence. And we can do the same with the Q function. Uh, we can calculate the uh, Q function on the policy with QPE as discussed, and then uh, we calculate uh, a new deterministic policy as the uh, argmax under this Q function. And again, these two steps are repeated until convergence. Uh, then the idea is to, now these are two steps, maybe we can combine them in one step. Um, and this is called a value iteration. Uh, so the value function uh, for uh, for, to obtain the optimal uh, the value function of the optimal policy. Uh, we have the max here around the brackets here. So we are doing the estimation and the maximization, maximization sort of uh, in, in one step. And um, also this iteration will converge to the policy, uh, to the value function of the policy with the, with the, of the optimal policy. And then after convergence, we can derive the policy by doing the uh, the argmax equation again. So, so this, for example, here would give us the, uh, eventually the policy. But during the iteration, uh, we don't have to store the policy explicitly. And we have a similar formula for uh, the Q value iteration, uh, where the maximization is is done here in this inner step and then we have the transition probability and the immediate reward function. In any case, yeah, after if you have the optimal Q function or the optimal so, so the Q function of the optimal policy or the value function of the optimal policy, we can derive the optimal policy by just doing the argmax over the actions. Okay, so um um, so this is the end of uh, the first part. So I went through all the slides in more detail than in normal um, re reviews from last time because I changed a few things and maybe some things are a little bit nicer. Uh, but it's not absolutely necessary that you go through this review, but I would recommend that you do. Um, and then next time uh, or today, uh, we will uh, go through the the other two parts, which are, are building on these initial, uh, on, on this first part, on this discussion we just uh, had. So thanks a lot and um, see you later.